Hi, this is Ranger Liam with another Ranger Minute for Redwood National and State Parks. Today I'd like to explore redwood reproduction. So what I have with me is a cone from a coast redwood. Now I know it's difficult to see, it's fairly small. It's about the size of an olive. But you gotta imagine that a big redwood like this will produce sometimes hundreds of thousands of these cones in a good year. Inside each one of these cones, you'll find between 60 and 100 really tiny seeds. That means that with the first winter storms, you're going to have hundreds of thousands, even millions of these seeds raining down on this forest floor. However, only just about one in a million of these seeds will grow up to be big red ones like this one behind me. Why is that? Most of the seeds from the coast redwood are just genetically inviable. The ones that do make it past the pathogens that kill them in the top of the tree, well, they have to find soil through this thick forest duff. If they do find soil, they have things like rodents that come along and eat them, or even if they sprout, then they have deer coming along and plopping off the top of them. This makes the first few years of the coast redwoods life very difficult. But let's say it does make it to the age of 15 or 20. Well, after that, it does have a good shot at becoming one of the tallest trees in the world. Luckily, coast redwoods have another way of reproducing. They can actually clone themselves. So when a big redwood like this is affected by such things as drought, flood, fire, or human interaction, it actually sends out a clone in response. Now this tree here was burnt by fire, and in response to that fire, it sent out two clones, this one here and the one behind me. They are genetic copies of the original. And so what we see is the main way that coast redwoods actually reproduce. I hope you will join us here at Redwood National and State Parks to explore more amazing features of the tallest living things in the world.